the rules of the duel. I love that guy. Me too. We need to get, we need to get him on the show really quickly. Today, here at the Clash Round North American Opens, we are running the standard tournament cap with the double deck submission. Two players are going to be facing off against each other. Both players submit two unique decks to us. Each deck has to be at least four cards different. And to move on, Ella, it's really simple. You just got to beat your opponent with both of your decks before they beat you with yours, and boom, you're there. So One simple. step closer to the top. Now, let's take a look at who we've got for today's top eight players coming from all over North America. Up first is going to be Full Frontage versus Six John. And then we have Isaiah versus Marcel P. Next is Woody versus the Killer Whale. And finally, we have Peito versus Ender. I can't wait. These are, again, the cream of the crop here playing for you guys. If, if you want to get better at Clash Royale, you just got to watch them. They're amazing. They're so going to be good. showing you all the tips and tricks. Now, Ella, we, we're not alone. Oh, no. We, we could not do we this We could alone. not be doing this by ourselves. We are joined by two amazing gentlemen who know everything there is to know about the everything. game. So let's go Hold over and that. meet them. On the blue couch, joining me, YouTuber, streamer, and former number one Clash Royale in the world, it's the Rum Ham. How you doing, sir? Oh, great to be here. I'm really excited to Good get to these things you. going. Good to have you. And over on my couch, I have host and creator of the Super Magical Cup, Rainy. Man, I can't... Right, we'll see if he can uh, improve on his predecessors. Let us know who you think is going to win. There is that pesky skeleton there it army. There is. Oh, Ender with the skeleton army. It's just such a great card. I mean, really raising the skeletons level to the appropriate level helped that card out so much. Wow, Ender has a level 3 expo. He's, he got it. He made it this far and is looking to take home a title with actually wow. a sub-tournament card. Level down. And the All skeleton right. army, too, is that level 8. Is one <laughs> level below. That's why he's in Reddit Charlie, the third one. Yes, he uses right. level three epics. Skill though has uh, not kept, or the card levels have not kept him out of this top eight. Very strong player. It shows that no matter what your card levels are, you can perform at the highest level against some of the best players in the game. There you go. And that first crossroad tells the whole story. Locks onto the tower and does a good amount of damage. Now, obviously, it doesn't change the fact that, okay, if it was a level four expo, that obviously would have been better, right? I mean, the better cards are just higher numbers, mm -hmm. more effectiveness, but, I really think that coming this far with the level 3 epics means that you're doing something really, really correct. And he could go further. Both players actually are running a couple under-leveled epics, so this will be great to see which one uh, prevails. But the cool thing here is that Expo is one of the best cards when you're playing up, when you're playing oh. people against higher level cards, because a low-level Expo will still do the full health of a tower if unanswered. Yeah, I think Pato's just actually ran himself out of Elixir, and uh, Ender correctly identified that moment, and that Crossbow actually locked onto the left side tower for a significant amount. Has to play really inefficient defense to clear that board. And in the end, the Mega Man is going to get one swing. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I you get next week. I'm tough tower. Get, find no, no, else. he did. He swung. It just it didn't hit. Uh, you're right. That's very yeah, cinematic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are two cards left in Ender's deck. If either of those is a fireball or a lightning rocket, something like that, he should be pretty confident being able to take down that left side oh, tower. Oh no. Where are you going? Oh, the ice Golem no. was pulling the Mega Minion across town. Wow, the Good Ice Golem didn't even know. <laughs> the crossbow was like, Ice Golem, behind you, behind you. But. And you see how critical the log is. Skeleton Army is such a popular counter to some of these cards. If you need the log, or else your expo is going to get caught up entirely on Skeleton Army. Was that a second log? I guess Man. they each cast a log. Ender is actually. <laughs> wow. No, no way. Somebody was really reactive Someone in that battle. Someone was very talkative. Oh my goodness. Evoking strong emotions here on the other side. <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh, oh man, man, and the princess. Absolutely. Oh man. What a predictive uh, log there. I don't know if he meant to catch the skeleton or if he expected it to show up. Hey, I have apologize oh, to you, Christian. Yeah. I said you couldn't get out two X. Here's the double oh, X. There, there it is. is. You know what's wild? Ender's playing a six card deck, basically. Oh, you don't even know wow. what the seventh and eighth card there is. There it is. <laughs> wow. Man, I think Shadows is tilted out of this world. He's just throwing the miner at the King Tower. I wouldn't blame him because that was an absolute demolishing. Two expos that are level three on the table might as well be a level six expo. That thing was <laughs> so much so damage. <laughs> so, correct me if I'm wrong here, but that was the most domination that we've seen so far today, yes? Yeah, I mean, if expos walked, that might have been a three crown. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. was, those expos had a lot of health left on yeah. them. Uh, I think, and that just shows how much of a slippery slope you can get in these expo matches. If one goes free, your tower is gone. You have two on the field. And that happened, I think, three times. Uh, Ender had the one on the left, the second on the right, and then the third one next to the one on yeah, the right. Yeah, why not? Why not? Just throw it in. Yeah, of course. And that, that led to a 2-0 victory. Rainy, what did you see in that match? I saw 
a log doing justice. <laughs> Multiple times. I saw a log rolling over the pesky skeleton army and then... Just wiping them out. They say that in the, the night, down. the log hunts, <laughs> but he also hunts during the day <laughs> they, they, in yeah, arenas yeah. of yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do you take such low-level cards and make it this far? Like, how could I mm, do that? Decision <laughs> making. Actually, it's it's important to point out that at tournament caps is actually not as dramatic as on ladder because on ladder you can get up to level ten, level eleven commons. Some things can get really ridiculously high yeah. level. At tournament caps, level three epics, depending on what they are, they actually don't lose too much effectiveness. One of the things that comes to mind is like guards. You know, sometimes the interaction stays exactly the same just because of the shield mechanic. And so sometimes the level of epics is not a direct translation to the effectiveness of mm -hmm. what your card can do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, clearly, in that case, yeah. Ender takes level three expos, and he just consistently locks on. You know, the difference is you can have a level four expo, but if you get it tanked up or if you don't know how to play your line of play correctly, you're not going to do any damage anyways. Yeah. Think about this. A level one expo, if you just let it attack, yeah. will kill a tournament cap tower. Oh, wow. It will kill a level nine oh, tower, wow. a level one expo. So the level three or four, obviously, you'd rather just have it be level health. four. But a little bit more damage. The level one would do it if cool. you could technically play well enough. What a great card. Expo. Yeah. So now, question. It's going to be good. If you were Pato, would you switch up your deck, or would you do the same one? It's hard to say, because Ender, that expo deck is out for the round. Right. He's won with it. Now, the question is... At least is, that one. Does he have a second <laughs> expo deck, like we've seen? Yeah. Marcel P brought two as well. So, I mean, there's definitely a, a situation where... I would expect other Reddit players to be playing too. If I'm Pato, I would probably take the same deck and just be much more ready for an expo. I mean, just don't do anything until I can determine whether or not my opponent's playing an expo deck and go from there. Okay. How about you? <laughs> would you agree with what I'm having there, Randy? Because uh, it's kind of it's kind of some mind games. Yeah, yeah. I would. Uh, you know what? I, I've seen so many decks that I just don't even really call it anymore. I just... <laughs> surprise me. Yeah, just surprise me. <laughs> this just surprise fun. me. All right, well, we'll, 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 see, we'll see if they can get surprised. I think Pato has a much more weight on his shoulders than maybe other players might have. He's got an entire country rooting for him. Sure. From, from Tijuana to Mexico City. No pressure. They, I know, they're all rooting for the him. Entire I can hear country. It. I can hear it from here. All right, well, let's see if Pato can stay in this and tie back up to Ender or will Ender run away with this 2-0. <laughs> Definitely was smart for Ender to put Skeleton Army as, as a featured card because he <laughs> yeah, absolutely. he seems to control it. He destroyed the Skeleton Army in that last match. Man, I have never been so happy. I've never been so del- Was that oh. rocket gonna hit? Oh! Oh! oh wow. It's the Mech Minion! Wow. Got him! That's actually- Uh-oh, but what do you do now? in the middle of that. What do you do now? The Miner is taking for the Skeleton Army. This could be- oh, Whoa! Oh, the Ice Spirit wow. takes out the Fire Spirits! Skeleton Army! Oh, wow. Do oh, it! Just- each skeleton has about 85 DPS, so even if you ignore it, yeah. it you only need one He's or two skeletons guy. to do yeah. a significant amount. Each skeleton does more damage to the tower than the miner does. That's amazing. What well, we saw it there. I love this play. Tesla at the river, what it does is it, it reaches, kills it, center located, it goes right back into its hidey hole so it's not particularly vulnerable, and it allows the Tesla player about 30 to 35 seconds of free defense while they build their elixir back up. Oh, surprise, there was a Tesla tower here and a Mega Minion falls. Oh, it's floating! Wow, that's some weird water. Oh no, the guards are gonna have to go to work trying to- Oh, there's nah, the no. no. <laughs> The Inferno Tower was still a very smart placement there because it does half of its health, which is about, you know, 800, 700 damage there to soak from the expo and buying you a little bit of time. Good use of the Miner to take down the crossbow because it had the uh, alternate effect of tanking for the Mega Minion, and I think, no, it's not gonna. Okay, good. I didn't commit myself <laughs> to something that I would regret. That was definitely not gonna swing. But I think Pato is taking old Rummy Hammy's advice there and not really doing anything of note until yeah. being sure the good. expo is gonna come very down, right? Active. He's just using the Princess, maybe at the river, get a shot in, play it behind the King Tower, maybe just play Mega Minion behind the King Tower to buy some time. Don't commit <laughs> to anything luck. big until you see that expo. What are you guys even talking about? They're really chatty. I don't like I don't like that Inferno Tower right there. I think you want to save that. I think you've been better off playing a unit or something. Because what you want is the Inferno Tower right there at the river. Yeah, and I think Pato is about to pay the price for that. Inferno Tower actually going to tank up for the crossbow for a little while, but will not be... Oh, what? There's a second one? I didn't cycle. What even happened? He cycled that quickly because he played the Log, Ice Spirit, and Skeleton Army. Oh, wow. And I think one, one yeah, more card in their Princess or Mega Minion. Mega Minion Skeleton Army is now three cards. I mean, think about that. You, whenever you play a card, if you're not familiar with this watching at home, once you play a card, 
it goes to the back of your deck and you will draw it again after playing four more cards. So Pato is really specifically trying to play the cheapest cards in his deck to get back to those Inferno Towers. And that is what we call the cycle. All right, Skeleton Army being played down. There's two Mega Minions and a Log coming across. We'll take down the Skeleton Army. An Ice Spear onto the Miner. And this might that's, be a big opening. That's a really healthy wow. Expo. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh. Locked on the tower with three seconds left. The Log is going to reduce the health of that crossbow blade just a little bit. And I Looks think it's not going to be enough. Fireball. Wow. Fireball. There's a rocket. a rocket. There's a rocket in this deck. Oh, I there is. That's right. Ender has a rocket. He can oh. fire. Oh. He's going to win the game on this rocket here in overtime. Oh, oh. 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 Not close enough. Ooh. They tried to trade. Well, they wow. To it's a game of inches. And that game came down to think about it. We talk about how these siege matchups come down to just one spell, one last minor. Pato could have won that game. Ender takes it 2 0 with the perfectly timed rocket. Woo. Wow. So, well, something I really liked about that game was that Tesla Tower. Is there anything else sneaky that you like to see played? Tesla Tower, well, Tesla Tower in that situation is actually really, really good because the way that it was positioned was exactly as Runham talked about in the match, right? You get the value by killing the princess and then it hides. And so you can't actually remove it from the board and you don't really want to play more units into it because it just gives it more and more value if you do that. Sure. And so you're forced to pass to your opponent. You have to play things behind the tower. Here's a catch, you're playing a crossbow deck. The instant they play something behind the tower, you play the crossbow and it can't actually tank. Oh, wow. And so I think that is actually a great dynamic that mm -hmm. uh, Ender had going for him in this deck. Yeah, we saw that in the Woody matchup, how critical that is if you happen to play things behind the King Tower just as they set it up, as well in the Lava Hound Expo matchup earlier, right? Anytime you play something really expensive behind your King Tower, you're being vulnerable to the Expo. I think Pato actually played significantly better match two or game two of the match they did game one was very patient waited and really the game was within reach but ender just had a few interactions that went favorably to yeah. him yeah and takes the match 2-0 that's it another 2-0 now going into he's our final now semi-finalist before we go to a quick break let's pull the replays here for this one the first one again Log Expo. Expo. Oh, it's just a very <laughs> good so popular time. man it I think some of these interactions are some of the most beautiful, right? Because they, they take a lot of understanding of what options your opponent has, what options you have to play against that, and then playing them at the right time. Because that really is the biggest difference. If the timing is off by just a little bit, you could have a crossbow that just gets taken down in, in the first few moments and does no damage. Absolutely. I mean, we, sometimes when you hear people talk about chess, they say, <laughs> oh. how, many, how many moves ahead can you see? These chess masters, they can see 10, 20 moves ahead. And I think that when I watch Expo matches, that's where I see the chess in Clash Royale. Okay. There's people, you have to see not just one, but two, three, four units Elixir ahead. Count. They're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna play the Expo. They're gonna drop the Skeleton Army. So I'm gonna play Log before I see Skeleton Army. And then I'm gonna have the Ice Spirit after that to catch the Mega Minion. And then I can drop the tower to catch it. You know, there's <laughs> so much so going much. on. It is not, it's not just pick up and play, right? You yeah. really have to learn the intricacies of these decks in incredible detail to be this successful yeah. with them. Yeah, this is, why, this is why you won't be seeing me. We're not sure what decks they're opening up with in game one, but I think you're right, Rainy, that this Hog Lightning deck could be the deciding deck in the match. Okay, they're actually gambling. Already some <laughs> differences. Splitting it up. Actually some mirror. differences in their line of play, and, and let's see if that makes all the difference. I think they're about even in terms of tower damage. Oh no, actually. The difference between a level it's three level, and level four expo it, yeah. is about right eight there. damage. It's right there. All right, fire spirits come across the way and actually don't do too much damage. And, uh, I think this game is starting off on pretty even footing. Now, obviously, having a level three expo means that you get traded out a little worse, but that's, that situation is not gonna happen again. I think that was like a... Ooh, Ooh. 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 Rocket, now Rocket doesn't fully kill the expo, but it does a decent amount. Would you rather have Rocket or Lightning? Lightning, because Lightning can actually hit the enemy tower as well, whereas Rocket is a much smaller impact point, so it can only hit the expo Unless, of course, they play the expo directly the next to the tower. Right. The big thing about having Rocket for Ender here is if he somehow, with his seven other cards, gets one tower low enough, then the Rocket all of a sudden gives him the impetus to close out the game early. And so, point. effectively, the tower health for uh, Killer Whale to chew through is a lot more than what Ender has to do. I don't know if I really like that fireball that we just saw out of... Uh out of a killer whale because that left him four elixir short to stop this expo. Big expo play from Ender, and you can see how quickly the state, the, the board state changes. That one play for Ender now refocuses his target to that right side tower, and rightfully so, 1.4K, that's fantastic from Ender. 
Another thing when they're playing mirror matchups, it's really hard to get a strong elixir advantage. Ender has only one elixir advantage, so he's really got to make it count when you're playing a nearly identical decks. Guards coming down the way, and that's going to give a lot of time. Oh, and that might be a big rocket. No, it misses everything else, but gets the crossbow down and actually enough to mitigate all the damage. And I think Ender's going to be pretty happy about that because now the ball is in Ender's court. He can play his crossbow at this point in time. And I think he will do just that. Mega Mini to try to protect. Inferno Tower goes up in front. How are you going to stop the fire spirits? And it's actually going to be countered by uh, a set of his own fire spirits. The ice spirits actually do trade as well. And guards get put in front, and again, Ender oh, actually comes out with a big uh, crossbow play, and I'm starting to get convinced that, hey, I don't care if my crossbow is level 3, I'm actually getting the upper hand in all these situations consistently. Actually plays the Fire Spirits Ooh. to block the crossbow. Ender is actually so sick right now. Yeah, I think you're right that he's trying to drift more towards the Rocket plan. If he can just get a little bit more damage on that tower. Rocket uh, does about 473, I think, in tournament caps here. So two Rockets will be enough to take that tower down. The question is, how can he cast two Rockets while not being vulnerable to an Expo? Oh, that's Great a big prediction. fireball play. Wow. But the question is, if that crossbow locks on for any amount of seconds, really, and that could spell the end of uh, Killer Whale's game right now because that rocket will push the little damage that Ender needs to finish it out. Ooh, this is rough. You know, it's a very different sort of expo game that we've seen in the, the past, actually. First off, great job by, uh, by Killer Whale adjusting his play. He knew that that rocket was going to come down with the Fire Spirit, so he had the Ice Spirit to jump on him. But we're seeing a very different game, whereas before we would see both players dropping their Expos in the middle and kind of wrestling back and yeah. forth, these players are taking turns. They're, They're sort of going back and going, my Expo, can you block it? All right, cool. <laughs> my turn, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a big rocket opportunity here, oh, and he's got wow. to play the Fire Spirit to defend, and I think this is the turning point of the game. I think Ender has the opportunity to, to push momentum back to his side. Elixir is in the advantage of Killer Whale, but the card cycle is in the advantage of oh, Ender. Oh, missed! Oh, oh no. no, and that could be a critical mistake. Now notice that there's only a few more health points left before it's in the kill zone for Rocket. This is the reason why you would bring Rocket in the Siege deck, because you really essentially are lowering the effective health of your oppo other opponent's tower. And this log is getting it just that much closer. That I think one he more log and one more Rocket. This expo might be lethal. He's got to play the Fire Spirits oh. to block, and he does! The, now, Fireball. Killer Whale does not have a rocket. He has two Fireballs that could win it, but all Ender needs is a log and a rocket to close this game out. Uh, is that is that math correct? Is that yes, true? Yes, it is. It is. A log and a rocket. Here it comes! Just let There's the rocket go! But the Fireball's not going to be enough! Play the rocket! Play the rocket! Rocket, no, he's got six oh, no. He's got six Don't let him play the log! Rocket. He can go! Taking it out! Oh, yeah. The fire spirits are right there! Oh. Uh, 47! Hey, hey! Oh my <laughs> goodness! Hey Seth, which point of HP matters the most? The last one! That is yeah. right! Yeah. That's there. right! Oh, we see it right wow. here all the time. Well, there it is, Ender now, up 1 0 against Killer Whale. Whew. One thing I want to talk about, though, is the Killer Whale fireball prediction that he played. Mm -hmm. What gives a player that confidence? Because if you if you miss that, if you throw a fireball and your opponent just decided to wait a second and not play anything, you could miss out on a huge elixir advantage. Of course. But on the other hand, the best time to take elixir off the board is right as it spawned because it gets no effectiveness. Think about this. If you play Skeleton Army and I'm going to arrow it, but your skeletons do a whole bunch of damage before the arrows hits, What's the point? Was it, what, did, I, did I really get an advantage there? Sure. So in the same way, by fireballing before they ever take a swing, before they ever do damage, huge. And actually, if you want to learn what we were talking about, about changing your line of play, changing your sequencing, predicting what your opponent's going to do, yeah, that, was that game was a clinic by both players. <laughs> they adapted every single time. No two setups were the exact wow. same as they kept trying to outmaneuver their opponent. And that was maybe the highest quality game that we've seen yeah. today in terms of technical play Ooh. and adaptation. Well, interestingly Absolutely. enough, too, those decks were so similar. How do you go in and beat yourself, I guess? Mirror matches are always very tough because it, it really makes you have to face your fears, right? You have to, there's no excuses anymore, right? The decks are the same. It's like, just like, all up better? to, yeah, it's just all up <laughs> to your decision better? making, really. Whereas that case was not exactly a mirror because I really think the key point for that match was Ender having the rocket, rocket right? The, the rocket was a key thing for Ender. And I think Crossbow play, they each had varying lines of play and very creative back and forth. But the use of Rocket and Ender knew how to navigate that situation yes. perfectly. I, I'm convinced Ender, yeah. I mean, there's still more games to go, right? Yeah.
But that was pretty sick. That was, <laughs> yeah. that was pretty cool. It was great cool. because they got into that back and forth because Ender knew that he didn't actually have to fight Expo. He huh. could just rocket just it, stop. right? So he's like, I'll set up my Expo. And then once it's down, and his opponent's like, all right, my turn to set up Expo. Sweet, rocket. <laughs> just don't even worry about it. Don't worry about setting up a defense. Just rocket it and play a nice spirit in front. Oh, well, there it is. Now Ender is up 1-0 to zero against the Killer Whale. One more game. And he's going to go into the finals to feed, uh, feed off against Marcel P. Feed off, face off, it's the same feed off, it's yeah. the same thing. Against Marcel P, let's take a look at, can he do it? We'll see if Killer Whale switched decks or if he stayed with the same deck as well. Ender has to switch decks. All right, Ender's going to set up a crossbow with an Ice Spirit in front. Uh, and the Golem comes down just in time. Really good execution from Ender so far. And I think he's just going to let the Mega Minion on the right side rock. That's a big log. That really Ooh. opens Ender's game up. <laughs> and the crossbow does a lot of damage to the left side. <laughs> Got the swing. Oh. Nice. Oh, Ender's still, Ender is really killing it. I can't. Hey, you have a level 3 expo. I don't care. I will. Well, don't take my word on this. But if you, <laughs> if you come out and, and meet me, I will take money out of my wallet to give you money <laughs> to, to buy gems to get and level up the, that crossbow because that is sick. Well, no matter what, both of these players are walking home with at least $300 with, of course, the person <laughs> yeah, who goes into the finals. Ender right. yeah, right. can maybe crack <laughs> open a few Super info. Magical chests yeah. and get those cards up. But you're right. I think he's showing that card levels are not holding him back. He has a level 3 skeleton army, level 3 expo, and he is in a dominating position with only two minutes to go in this game. I mean, how many times has he come out on top of these situations? Now, this time, I think Killer Whale has a big opening. Those Fire Spirits does a lot of damage. But again, this board state is going to earn Ender possibly the tower. No, he doesn't quite get it. But 510 to 1.4k. Ender has an argument to, to hole up and spell cycle now at this point. What's changed in Ender's deck? Um, we, I, well, he certainly does have Rocket. I don't think he had Skeleton Army. You're right. And I, I don't think, think he, 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 he does have Skeleton Army. That's Marcel P who had Skeleton yeah. Army as well. So and I don't right. think Skeleton he had Log no. either, right? His opponent had Log, but he... No, maybe he did have Log. I'm not Did sure. he have Fire... Uh, oh, yeah. Either way. Yeah. I think you're right, though. We'll oh, Fireball's there definitely is. new. That's yeah. So he switched up the spells. He switched up a little bit of the blocking support. He had Guards in the other deck instead of Skeleton Army. What's really interesting about this deck is now that he has Fireball as well as Log, he can actually very confidently sit back. Fireball, as compared to Rocket, is actually not as expensive, so you can right. cycle it much easier. You can make a case for it much easier. Yes. And he's only one fireball away from taking that left tower. Wow. So now Ender finds himself in the same position that Marcel P did before. Defend, defend, defend. Anything you can do to defend is going to be critically important at this stage of the game. Big Log takes down the Ice Bear, and that's going to help the Mega Minion with the duel, and the crossbow actually gets oh. opened up. Oh, wow. Ender, you oh. need to find some way to stop that crossbow from doing a ton of damage. And all of a sudden, this match is a lot closer than it seems. 30 seconds for uh, for Killer Whale to put that right side tower into spell cycle zone, and that's the race right now. I can't actually believe my eyes that he's playing the crossbow on the left side because you need, I think, just a sliver of health. No, he's gonna, he threw that oh, fireball out. It. The game now is Ender has to make sure that he pays Killer Whale back for that four elixir spell on that right side tower. Fireball. Can he do that? That's what, the question. What Killer Whale's doing is actually setting himself up for overtime. Yes. He's expecting that both players are gonna fireball and take those towers down on the other side. There's one fireball, take the tower. That might have been a crucial Ender's mistake. Ender's got a fireball. Ender. Oh, Ender oh, needs the fireball. Oh, Ender. 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 Oh, Oops. <laughs> oh, what in the world? I think he forgot. I think he thought that that Mega Minion on the left side was going to swing once on the tower. He just needed to log Fireball. He, he did have the Elixir, but he may have not had it in hand at that exact moment. Well, so right there, also at the end, we saw, we saw Ender use the Fireball defensively against a crossbow, and he, the tower is still like 170. He may, may, just... may have not cycled, but here's the thing. If you don't Fireball that Expo, the Expo kills your tower, right? Really? So, the I mean, travel he used time? it there. So, I think that he... Definitely could have logged for the one for the win. I just or to put in overtime, overtime. But I don't. I guess he didn't see it. Didn't have it in hand. He had enough elixir to cast Ooh. it. Tournament nerves. That's it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just a little, it's, little. it's this identifying your game plan, right? I think if Ender had committed to Inferno Tower crossbow in the middle of the map, there's no fear. You even if you lose out that trade and and Killer Whale's Expo survives with that much health and he does like 200 damage to your tower. You take 30 seconds and say, okay, you get to do 200 damage every 15 seconds. Mm, yeah. Are you really going to uh, win that match? Sure. I'm you really, know. I'm not sure why he had the Inferno Tower in his deck, why he didn't play the Inferno Tower at the river against the Expo, because the Expo came down and he's like, you know, kind of freaking out, playing stuff, ends up fireballing it. 
assume he had an Inferno Tower in his hand the whole time because he, he hadn't played it yet right. in the entire match. So I wonder what caused that line of play, what, what caused that decision making. If you have a if you have a card in your deck and you actually don't use it at all, is that necessarily a, you're already now down against your opponent or is it okay to be like, oh, I'm just never going to use this. I have cards that can deal with everything that my opponent's got. I think it's fine to play one, maybe two, but probably one very situational card in your deck that's only there to cover your absolute worst nightmare. If you have a plan that's like, I have to do this in order to win the game, yeah. and you just need, like, I don't normally want to play Rocket, but I have to play Rocket because I need it to stop blank card, okay. that's okay. But in general, I think you want to use all eight cards because more cards at your disposal gives you diversity, it gives you versatility, it allows you to adapt on the fly. Hmm. I don't know, what do you think, Randy? I think that it's, it's, it's important. I think that there is a point in time where you really have to consider there, for example, the best example here is if you have Rocket in your deck, right? There are definitely moments in time where you know that there is no time to play this Rocket except for at the end of the match, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that you do have to consider. Okay. That there are definitely times where you can hurt yourself by playing the card, but you definitely want to make sure that the card has some value at some point, and even if it's at, as little as just that one time at the end of the match, right. so be it. But try to at least make sure that it has some value. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, the Game final three. battle, game three of the semifinals between Ender and Killer Whale. It's coming right up. Let's take a look at what we actually know what both of the decks are bringing because they got to now win with both the decks they just played. This is without a doubt the most high stakes game either of these players have I'm, ever played in their Clash Royale. Career. I'm so pleased because this is just an awesome series of matches to watch from the round of eight until now. We've seen some crazy, crazy interactions. All right, it's gonna be Hog Rider and double one elixir. This is Killer Whale's cycle deck, and actually, this might be the perfect solution to what Ender has. Let's see if Killer Whale can demolish Crossbow with yeah. the Hog Cycle. This is actually, Killer Whale, remember his second deck is a Hog Lightning deck, so what we're looking for, Ender, unfortunately, I think for Ender, has an Inferno Tower in his deck, so uh. he would've, it's gonna have to really, very, very careful about that Inferno Tower. If he plays it a little too close, it might get in trouble. He could also get it lightninged right here. Yes. His Expo could be lightning. Lightning could also take down the Mega Minion or the Ice Golem or hit the tower. I mean, there's a lot of options, but I think that Killer Whale is gonna opt not to do either of those and let the Mega wow. Minion get the advantage. Good defense from Killer Whale. That Archer survives by the hair of her chinny chin chin. <laughs> and now she's gone. And now she's gone. <laughs> but that, this shows actually a lot of those small chumpy troops are pretty good at blocking expo shots. Mm -hmm. Each expo bolt doesn't do that much damage, it just attacks very quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lot of troops like barbarians, archers, goblins, those kind of thing, they're actually pretty decent at holding off because unlike things that do splash damage, it's just gonna. He has to shoot each one individually. And the old skeleton army split. Now the hog rider actually gets pushed back by the log. And now has to jump across. Good positioning on the Inferno Tower. Ender has correctly identified that Lightning is in the deck without even seeing Killer Whale play it. And that's exactly the position you need. Ender or Killer Whale knew that the Lightning would have given them the effect that he wanted and just opted to skip it. Absolutely. Very high pressure gameplay here. Uh, there's not a lot of great ways in Killer Whale's deck to invest Elixir. Investing Elixir means putting it on the board, not necessarily meant to use it right now, but saving it for later. A lot of the things in Killer Whale's deck are fast moving. They're aggressive. There's not a lot of things you can just put on the board and wait for later, whereas there's a lot of stuff that Ender can put on the board and save for later. The Ice Golem gave that Inferno Tower a small hug, and now it's going to be the Mega Minion duel. That, that Ice Golem popping and slowing everything down, and the log is enough Whoa, to eliminate those wow. units, and Ender makes his first big connection in the game, and this is the... Ender is reaping the benefits of great defense, right? The Hog Rider came in a few times, took a little bit of damage, but that one crossbow play has already caught himself back up. Splitting the Skeleton Army like that gives you a good opportunity. Oh, wow, and the log comes down on the other side. He has to use the Lightning. Oh, and that's not going to be good enough. And we'll see how much damage Ender can convert on this side. Now, there's this is a kind of a double-edged sword, right? If you start splitting right. your damage, you start wondering, would that Elixir have been better spent still on the left side after all? Uh, but we will not see the answer to that question until moments later. The nice thing about switching to that expo over to the right side is that it takes away the opponent, the opportunity for your opponent to be like, oh, I'm going to play a hog rider now, right? Like, I'm going to try to sneak in some of that stuff because he's immediately oh, he, having to react to the expo. Uh, I, I think Killer Whale might have just gotten baited right there. He used the lightning on the Inferno Tower, but the crossbow wasn't out on the field, and now Killer Whale wow. needs to find himself cycling. And if Ender can take down this oh, Inferno this Tower, and he does, there's no lightning in hand. Oh, there it finally is, just, just in time. That was so dangerous. I think Killer Whale almost just got 
The important thing is, look at Sucker look punch. at the elixir difference here. Killer Whale is actually significantly further behind an elixir, which makes it hard for him to react to a lot of this stuff. Ender's able to play with one or two extra troops on every attack in order to supplement it because he was ahead in the elixir, and that's really paying dividends now. Oh, the log is enough to take it down. Just a little bit of chip damage every little time. Ender, after he pushes the log across the other side, takes down the Inferno Tower and gains little bits of advantage. Where's the card to defend? There it finally is. Ooh. The Ice Dome, the timing for Ender is immaculate right now, and I feel like Killer Whale is playing straight into Ender's hands. And one of these, if that Inferno Tower can ever lock on, it's going to be very, very deadly, but it just seems like he's oh, not okay. able to quite get it. Cycled into the archers, and that's going to help uh, yes. Killer Whale defend. I think he's stabilizing a little bit more. I think this is the first time in a long time Killer Whale is going to have an opportunity to actually play a Hog Rider. Oh, not, not with those Echoes. The, the deck is such a fast cycle. I mean, look at that. Two two-cost cards, two three-cost cards, and a one-cost card are coming out almost every single time that that Expo comes down. So even with only 10 Elixir, he can usually have not one, but two supporting cards for the Expo. It's interesting. Ender this, this time did not choose Ooh. to play the Skeleton Arm. He's going to get it here. I think a pre-fire log would have been perfect in that situation, but no, he doesn't get value off killing the Skeleton Army and helping the Hog Rider get in. But it's actually getting dangerously close. Ender seems like he has a lot of health on the tower, but it's a lot less than it, than it really is because Hog plus Lightning does a ton of burst damage. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, and he's looking to get it low enough that he can actually fireball. If he just locks onto the tower in any way, just a little bit of damage, he might be able to fireball his way to victory, but there's a good amount of skill. Oh, no! Oh, there it is! oh, no! And the fireball is enough to close what it out. What a huge Ender, lock on! Gosh. Ender eliminates Killer Whale. Now this, wow. oh my oh, goodness, oh, this is actually man. so interesting to me, because think about this, Crossbow was played so frequently in this tournament, even Woody played Crossbow, but Killer Whale made that deck look like paper with oh. his Hog Cycle deck, right. Ender somehow got momentum just, in the match. Just dances around it. That was crazy. What I, what I saw very differently from a lot of the other Expo matches there was that Ender played somehow a very high-tempo, aggressive Expo. He hmm. was always, every single hmm. time, trying to be the first person to make a move because he knew that if he ever just sat back and let's see what happens, his opponent can go hog, lightning. And now you're on the reactive. And the Expo deck didn't have a lot of great ways to defend it. What I think Killer Whale could have done differently there was maybe try to get off of the Inferno Tower plan and try to counter mm. those Expos with something like the hog lightning, right? Mm. Drop the hog rider instead of the Inferno Tower because Ender got better and better as the game went on at preparing for it. that Inferno Tower, right? Sure. So, all right, guys, we have a replay now from that last semifinal match. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at it. Let's see, will, will it be an Expo, you guys think? Probably. <laughs> uh, uh, well, oh, now that we we've are. seen it, uh, it's spoiled the result for me. Gosh. Well, I think the, oh man, some of these matchups, like I think what's going to come down to the finals is which defensive tower each player has against each other. Ender used the rocket to finish it off, but if Marcel P has in one deck Inferno Tower and in the other deck Tesla Tower, both of those are mm. really good against enemy Expos, but they're a little different in terms of how and when you want to play them. Sure. Yeah, I, I think that Ender is really, maybe out of necessity because of his card level, is just an incredibly thinking player. I mean, line of play is something that he respects more than any other player that we've seen today, I think. I and think oh yeah, I'm sorry. The key, I think, in one of these matchups here near the end was just that Killer Whale kept finding himself in these awful situations of having to play just archers, skeletons, the first thing I can afford, just, just throw them on the yeah, board get in order front. to defend, and that mm -hmm. ended up biting him. He fell behind an elixir with about a minute to go, falling behind by I think as much as five elixir, Ugh. and that was what allowed Ender to set up better and better expos and finish off that tower. Now talking about siege decks, uh, do you talk about how he's kind of splitting his damage at the last point. Is that ever, why, when would you do that? Whew, there's a lot of situations. Right? It's a little tough in siege decks because you want to finish them off yeah, with spells. Yeah, because it seems like it's just that uh, first tower you want to take down. Yeah. Brandy, what do you think he was doing when he was splitting that Skeleton Army? Which we saw multiple times Skeleton Army went down both lanes at once. I think in that early game, he really wanted to split Skeleton Army because possibly he knew that he wasn't committed to one tower or, or the other in terms of having a thousand damage plus on one side. And so he started splitting the Skeleton Army to see if he could poke any hole in the line of play to make sure that, okay, maybe Killer Will is going to play uh, the log on this side and he has his Inferno Tower on this side as well and all of a sudden that opens up a hole on the right side and just kind of going left and right, kind of really playing, I don't know if this term is going to connect with a lot of the viewers, but footsies in a, in a way. He's <laughs> really going just, either way. He's like, just playing hey, spacing, over here, right? Over he's here? just yeah. feeling out the situation. Hey, testing the waters. Yeah, yeah. testing the waters, exactly. It was also really convenient hog rider defense because if you have eight skeletons in either lane, it's really hard for your opponent to play a hog rider without also playing their log. Well, once they commit 
six elixir, right? Hog plus log down a single Hog lane plus. to your 1.5 elixir, your half of a skeleton <laughs> army, right? That gives you a huge opening of all this extra elixir to build into your, your expo push. And that's why we saw Ender switch one side. Yeah, it, yeah he, he switched was, in I'm one lane. Go on this side. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna take that a little bit of advantage and see if I can push through some more. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and pull up the bracket. Thus far, we have our two finalists oh, here. Man. Getting the one step closer for two thousand dollars and a chance of moving on. What's crazy? Those crown duels. They're friends. They're clan system buddies. I mean, they're, yeah, yeah. Wow. Marcel P is a co-leader of Reddit Alpha, and Ender is a <laughs> member of Reddit Charlie, one of their so highest good. ranking uh, players. So you have two people who have, they've studied the same forums, they've read the same strategy guides, they may have even worked on these decks together, mm. meeting in the finals, and both are running double expo, so they clearly, they called the field correctly. Yeah. Now, right now, kind of talk about that a little briefly. If you, if you know an opponent, right, you know his style, you know what decks he plays, you've played with him before, can you, because uh, I'm trying to think, like, if I were to, if you guys were to play each other, right? You guys would play each other a lot. Mm -hmm. You know if, your styles. If you're thinking, oh, I'm going to one up him by throwing him off, and he's like, oh, he thinks I'm going to one up him, and I'll just yeah. go. Can you, you know, get to in your head? Yeah, where, where does the mind game stop? The mind games are going to be more mindy gamey than ever, ever. mind games are. Because here's the this thing. Because you're not game. just thinking, I'm going to do this, my opponent will do that. But now you start to go, wait. He knows, yeah. he knows, I, I know, know, he knows right. to do this. So he's not oh. gonna play Ice Golem, he's gonna play guards instead. And they're just gonna be constantly trying to outmaneuver each other. I actually think this is ripe for a kind of blowout victory because they uh. could be outthinking each other so much mm. that you accidentally flub and leave an expo wide open because you were so you're one so square. You're, right. you're calling a blowout, possibly. We'll see, it could go either way though. Like it's one of those things where Game one and game two could be won by different players in totally dominating fashion. Mm. And it's not because either player is worse than the other, but they're so ready for each other yeah. that they do the wrong move do you think, trying to psych each other out. Rain, do you think that uh, the one level down that Ender is bringing to the table is going to affect him? Uh, it hasn't so far. You know, normally, which is amazing. normally I would say yes. Maybe Marcel P as a player is a hold Ender honest, right? But I'm actually so glad that Ender played in this coronation because never before have I seen a player who is so thoughtful about what yeah. he puts on the table, what he puts on the board, every single decision, modify his play in the middle of the game and make the situation right for him. So we'll see. We will see. Ooh, here we go. All right. Ender opens up by playing the crossbow on the left side against the guards. There's the Inferno Tower locks onto the crossbow and that's already not really a good start for Ender. And Ender gives a little oops. The student is realizing <laughs> that he's up against the master now and maybe needs to step his game up. I love it. Unless the sensei flaps him on the head the with respect. the expo. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, with the expo. I'm just imagining that. Scene. That's, that's hilarious. Big oh, oh, the rocket saves the day as it has so many times already for Ender. I was going to say, so if you, one of the things to watch for in expo mirror matches, if I can counter your expo with an inferno tower and my inferno tower still has a significant amount of health and time left on it, there's a great opening for me to set up the expo directly next to it and leverage the Inferno Tower's remaining defense. Mm. But Ender opened up with his rocket version of the Expo deck, the one that served him so well in the last round against Free uh, against Killer Whale, and he's gonna rocket that Expo. It's up to Marcel to figure out how he's going to do this damage when his Expo's gonna get rocketed every time it shows up. That's a great fireball. I think that is totally worth it. In, in a Siege match, every little ounce of damage you can get away with, you want to because you never know how many more opportunities you're gonna get, right? And so, if you can start making these excuses early, all the better. Crossbow comes down, Inferno Tower on the other side, and there's no way to detarget it. And that's two crossbows now shut down by Marcel P. Marcel was really smart there. He used his spell. Okay, so what Ender was trying to do was play things behind his King Tower to build up into a very effective expo. He wanted that Mega Minion to reach the river so he could play an expo beneath it. He wanted those guards to reach the river so that he could play an expo next to it. And instead, both times, Marcel identified what was going to happen there, logged the guards, fireballed the Mega Minion, and prevented oh, the from getting no. a good setup. No, what? No, Come it. on! I mean, he's made of ice. The fire should have melted him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rumor. Oh. Fire doesn't melt ice. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> Rocket fires can't melt ice beams. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Oh, yeah. man. This time, however, Ender does get a unit in front of his crossbow, and he tries to be more successful, but Marcel P has just so many tank units. Talk about value from a card like Ice Golem has been doing really well, really well for Marcel T. Great timing on that Mega Minion too, because even though the Mega Minion is mostly just there for defense, by taking out 
the oh. by doing two attacks on Ender's tower, he just gets him that much closer into fireball log range. Now, one of the things that you have to notice right now is where the mind game stands. Okay, Ender's gonna play another crossbow, and I think Inferno Tower is gonna come down. Log. Oh, oh that's fire big. Go down. That is big. Right now, Marsh LP identifies that one of the biggest defenses that Ender has is the rocket. That was something that Killer Whale could not overcome when he was facing Ender. Marcel LP has actually totally given up on crossbow doing damage to the tower. Is this the, fire? The He's baiting the rocket with exactly. Him. He's baiting the rocket, and now Ender can't spell cycle with rocket. Yep. The fireball is doing better. Ender is basically locked into the worst deal ever. Every single time Marcel P spends six elixir on an expo, Ender has to spend eight on yes. a rocket plus a log. And Marcel P knows that he's got him in a good submission hold, right? You're gonna have to take a negative two elixir trade every single time that you want to attack him. Here comes a log. And I think Ender is fighting desperately to keep his crossbow alive. And that's a big log. And look at this value that Marcel P is getting off of his logs. That's twice now that the log has not only knocked the shields off of the guards. The ice gold's oh, going to do it. We said he never hit yeah. it. He's going to take it hug. down. Give it the hug. Give it the hug. All That's gonna be a replay, buddy. Hug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Down, that, better be a, that better be a replay. Down. We have the Pekka sachet, and now we have to have the ice golem hug. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk a little more about that ice golem because you were mentioning him earlier in the match, and he wasn't taking down a tower then, but he was obviously doing something right. Yeah, how, how, yeah. Did, how did how did Ender allow that? Now you know, ice golem is one of those cards. Previously against Killer Whale, Killer Whale also used the ice golem pretty extensively, but. Using skeleton army, leveraging different cards, putting him put in front of the crossbow, Ender was able to overcome the ice golem uh, health level and really push his crossbow onto the tower. In this situation, I really feel like it was the ice golem, ice golem in combination with the log that really helped Marcel P push past that point, right, and have his ice golem survive. Mm -hmm. The log consistently pushed guards down or killed them and then took down fire spirits at the same time, making the ice golem so much more survivable because the big damage unit card drops that uh, Ender placed were wiped off the table instantly by the log. And I think that's the key point. Okay. Because once the crossbow then locks onto the ice golem, it actually does so little that the ice golem will survive. But with the addition of something like guards and fire spirits, the ice golem dies much quicker. Hmm. Now, one of the things, Roman, that you were saying is that uh, poor Ender was in a deal that was just terrible, right? So it seemed like Marcel P had just got him like, hey, yeah, you, e you either use your rocket on my tower, which would be okay, but then my expo is gonna get you. How far in do you think Marcel P saw that opportunity and coerced Ender to being there? I think it was probably the second time that he realized this was going to happen every time. So, for example, you're looking for patterns in, in your opponent's play so you okay. can exploit those patterns. Marcel P drops Expo next to the Inferno Tower. Rocket comes so down. This is great value. Yeah, but what he noticed is that he wasn't just letting those couple shots go through, and that's probably smart of Ender, but he was throwing the log as well. So a minute later, does it again. Drops another Expo, and here comes the Rocket log. And it wasn't like the log was waiting for some other thing to come on the board for playing it. It was literally Rocket in the air, log on the ground, they hit at the same time. At that point, I think Marcel P goes, that's a pattern. It's a pattern that's bad for him, good for me. Huh. I'm going to keep doing that and seeing if he so keeps falling amazing. for it. And he did. I mean, maybe Ender didn't have a better choice, especially once his tower got down to like 700, 800 health. Can't really afford to take too much damage on sure. your tower. But, uh... Whew, that was tough. Now, are we playing best of three in the finals or best, best of five? Five. Best, of, best five. of five. Stakes are that. raised in the Clash Around North American Open. So we play a best of five. And according to our double deck rule set, you can win up to twice with, with a deck. Got it. But you still need to win with both oh. decks to actually win the match overall because you need three wins. Okay, right. so Marcel P's up one game, Ender's not out. This means that neither player actually has to switch deck. If Marcel P wants, he could stay with the same deck. Yes. Yeah. What, Just guys, for one more win. You guys think he would? Well, I guess we're gonna find out right now. Marcel P up one to zero. Let's see if he can take that lead. I think Marcel P's decks in general, it's interesting because every time Marcel P has played his Tesla deck, he's lost once before winning. And I wonder almost if that's because the deck is a little less than ideal for Marcel P. I, this question, I can't really answer because I'm not playing at the level go. that Marcel P is, but it's interesting to consider. So far, the story of this match has been the oh master my God. schooling wow. the wow. student. We saw wow. a kind of slow expo that started up there, and Ender answers with fire spirits. He let it hit and then immediately was like, haha, no, whatever you have to follow up, that's not gonna be good enough. This might oh, be no. Ender's counterattack, actually. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Those Inferno Towers are gonna be really, really yeah. strong here. Now, I can't tell if Marcel P, I believe Marcel P is actually playing the same deck 
that he did last time. He must consider this to be his better version if he had to pick one. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so as well. I think the Tesla Tower, I mean, just by results, it shows, right? Every single time, Marcel P has gotten 2-1 for the entirety of today, right? Really? And every You're time right. he's lost, it's been his Tesla Tower. It's mm. a good point. Mm. <laughs> that is a good point. So yeah, that, but that's one of the great challenges of the double deck format is it forces your opponents not only to be Defensive a really expo. clever and smart deck builder, but to uh, be prepared for all the things that you might encounter. I think Marcel P is doing whatever he can to just yep, defend fine. because he has fireball in this, in this deck, right? He knows that if anything, he can just sacrifice in overtime some elixir and just do two fireballs and win the game. Or find an excuse to one, do one fireball now and then one fireball later. Two fireballs and a log. Two fireballs and a log. It's a, two fireballs oh, is 444, buddy. I love, your, I love your brain. And a partridge in a pear tree. Right. That's what he needs. So Ender just rocketed Marcel there. Yeah, I think, well, so here's what Ender's doing to respond to that. He goes, oh, you're not going to attack anymore? Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> when when both of us gear up towards let's 10. Just bleed uh, oh, oh yeah. God. I'm just going to fire rockets. Now, he unfortunately kind of bit really hard there. He's like, I'm going to build up this big push and come to attack you and walk right into a deadly fireball. Ooh. Has to play the crossbow defensively. Look at that. While the enemy, while the red crossbow is shooting the blue <laughs> inferno tower, the blue crossbow is getting that nice little hit point. Lead. Nice. Well, it should be far enough away. This is actually something interesting. In the last match we watched, I explicitly said, Rocket is getting outcycled by Fireball. Now Ender says, hey, you know what? I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm just going to take the damage Marcel. and outcycle you with my Rocket. Marcel P knew what was going on, decides to set up a second. He set the Expo in the middle in order to set up the He's second Expo. The same thing. Because he, if he sits back and doesn't attack at all or threaten in any way, there will be more enough Rockets maybe to take down that tower. So by building towards that second Expo on the side, it forces his opponent to spend Elixir reacting and doesn't let him just fire a bunch of Rockets. There's on the no way to do it. Rocket will not close out that left side tower, and despite Ender's best efforts... Rocket in the air. Oh, okay, it goes for... Yeah, that's good, oh, that's the king tower. That king was... We just gotta do something. That king did not care at all. That's the first time I've seen a king get smacked and, not, and, and not get mad. Kings, I'm fine. So, Marcel P now up two to zero against Ender in the finals. If you guys are playing this tournament right now, if you're Ender, how hard is it gonna be to shake off going... You know, I now I have to come back and win three games in a row. Don't call it a comeback, but... Marcel P, as Rainey specifically mentioned, has lost with the Tesla. Has lost with the Tesla pretty yeah. much exclusively. His yeah. losses have been with that Tesla yeah. tower. Deck. He's obviously been able to win at the end of the You're day, right. but he still did take losses okay. using it. Right. So perhaps there's an opening. Here's the thing: Marcel P has to play that Tesla tower deck. So if Ender can figure out how to win with this list against the Tesla tower deck and, and then do the it again, one. they're at least going into a critical uh. game five, a deciding game five, where both are using their alternate decks. Yeah. So. We'll see. I think Marcel P has shown a much deeper uh, level of understanding of the matchup. Uh -huh. He's been really good at baiting Ender into some bad setups, which yeah. is pretty crazy because we've seen so Ender do that to, to other see. people. Yes. And it just shows how there's... There's a food chain. There's <laughs> us. There's mouth breathers like us. There's good tournament <laughs> players. There's elite tournament players. Yep. And then there's the finalists there's of the finals. Clash Royale of yeah. North American Open. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to see how... What is the best way to practice looking for patterns like these guys do? Because when I play, sometimes it's just like, okay, I can see like, oh yeah, when I play this, you know, Prince against his goblins, this is great. Like, or, I shouldn't say Prince, because it wouldn't be too good. Dark, good, dark, <laughs> prince. <laughs> dark Prince lives to clear up goblins. Dark Prince? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that's, that's just kind of my extent of seeing patterns, but how do you see just the, the mass extent of what these so guys So far see? in advance, too. Yeah. It really comes down to just being kind of, uh, being good. Just surrounding <laughs> just being yourself smart. in competitive play, right? Now, here's something that actually is probably a pretty good message to send out there for any aspiring Clash players is that it's not magic that these guys are fantastic at the game, right? Oh, sure. They put time, they put effort, they put a lot of thought into what they do. And with time and effort and patience, you can also push yourself up to that level. It just comes with, again, surrounding yourself with the proper competitive environment, hmm. Reddit, is a great example of that. They're one of the best competitive clans out there in Clash Royale, and that's because they share, they communicate, they practice, and they really think about that, and they foster a very good competitive community. And now we see Marcel P and Ender facing off in some of the most insane mind games we've yeah. ever seen, and lines of play that have ever been created in Clash Royale. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's, it also becomes a little bit of poker in a lot of ways, where if you play enough, you just sort of develop that sixth sense. You start to understand, like, I... Sometimes, this is right, but just because I feel it. Think about this. I might be able to guess what deck you're playing from the very first card you play and where you play it. Oh, and, and if I see oh. that and guess right, <laughs> I may be able to adjust all my cards from that moment before I ever see 
the critical card that you're holding oh, in your deck. Those mind games. Yeah. Can someone make an entire list of like positions and cards and where you put them and what deck you're? So we can just like have it on the side while we yeah. play. <laughs> I mean, it used I to be until the last too. balance update changed it. If I saw an elixir collector, the first thing I assumed you were doing was giant. Poison. Yeah, giant poison. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you just yeah. build everything after that. But that they're playing giant poison. All right. Well, guys, we are into this next matchup in the finals. Marcel P just needs one more this could victory. Be it. Ender, he's got to come back. Let's see if he can do it. I'm so excited, Rub Ham, because I think for once in my life, I'm going to predict the winner correctly. Oh, no, actually, I think I did that you one pick, You picked me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you underrate yourself. You are <laughs> You're a humble excellent. man. Humble man. But here we go. The Ice Golem does get a little freeze on there, but it's enough to get a tiny bit of damage from Marcel P. All right, good opening. A little more tiny. Mega Minion. Oh, how many hits? How many hits? Oh, oh he's not going to get any <laughs> because he's too busy looking at some skeletons. In that case, we talked about how you'd always want to log the Skeleton Army. That's a great example. That Skeleton Army already did what it was supposed to do. Yeah. It distracted it away. Three. It forced two Elixir out of Ender's hand. I think Marcel P came out on the better end of that trade, even though the Skeleton Army got logged for a minus one Elixir. Mm. All right, we'll see. Ooh, another crossbow loaded up. And defensive Ooh. crossbow. Is that in range? Oh, oh yes, it is. But it I is. wonder what the logic there is. Maybe he's trying to pull all that stuff out so that he can just sort of shoot the other one. The deck? I'm not sure. That's it. it might have just been a cards in hand slash timing thing that Marcel P identified. I think that he knew that he lost that exchange and he's going to just cut his losses. Right. right. Say, okay, fine, let's reset the situation. You get 100 damage as opposed to 1,000. Right. I'm it. not going to go down He didn't have Tesla Tower in hand, perhaps. So yeah. you just feel like he had to do something else instead. Or he didn't have enough Elixir to play Tesla with some other yes. defense. Yeah, he needed to buy a little more time. We'll never know. Would love to talk with Marcel P sometime and figure that out, but... Ender has a slight elixir advantage right now. He's only up by one, but that might be really crucial because that lets him get a free, basically a free ice spirit. Not bad. There it is. Oh, no. Tesla actually locks onto the crossbow, and this could be really big. So one of the big things that lost Marcel P a match early in the tournament was the incorrect placement of the Tesla tower. Yeah. And so now I think he's really keen on like, okay, I need to make sure that the Tesla is appropriately positioned. Ooh, I wonder what the idea was with switching lanes for Marcel P. He's already got 20% of the health down on that other tower. Maybe he purposely wants to draw out the elixir, the Inferno <laughs> Tower to the other side. Go, Knight, go. Thanks, says Ender. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Tesla gets dropped, and again, more cards, and this is, we're going down the poker hole right now. They're playing their hands. Wow. Skeletons. Oh, and a big, oh, and Ender comes out dominantly on wow. top. That's a half health crossbow working a lot of damage in the ice spirit cycles. And Ender takes a convincing position now in the match. Big fireball, gonna take down the crossbow, but that was a big win for Ender. Oh, and he has oh, another he's one ready again. to go. He's locked and loaded. This is the thing that separated Ender's Expo deck from a lot of the other Expo decks we've seen today. Is he's got one of the fastest, most high tempo Expo decks out there. He's not even really playing the Inferno Tower to help guard it. He just wants things like Skeleton Army, Ice Spirit, Ice Golem in front. And Ender wins wow. again, and this might wow. be enough right in the final moments of the match to close out the game. No, 526. But I think that Ender is in an incredibly dominant position. He actually played his next expo on the right side because he wants to ensure that he keeps the pressure up. He wants to force Marcel P to continuously play Elixir on defense. I expect to see, okay, Marcel P actually gave up on defense also. He says, okay, I know that I'm super behind. I need to play on the left side now to catch up. Ooh, count the elixir on board. I think Ender actually has a significant elixir. Oh, right now. what kind of a twist of events is this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. The uh, other that's side. level three expo. The other side. We talked about will Ender's level three expo come back to bite him? No. Ender's like, no, I'm still going to move this thing, Marcel. You just watch me. Oh my gosh. So now that Ender found out how to beat this deck, do you do you think he could take it? He found it. Everything is going as planned, weakness. right? <laughs> Everything is still going as planned. We knew that Marcel P would lose with the Tesla right. deck. Right. He's the question once. is, he's probably going to lose again because they're going to play the same deck matchup. <laughs> <Yeah>. And then <laughs> that's where the win is going to happen. That's where the win is going to happen. Just like I'm telling you guys the now, listen, losing twice. <laughs> listen up, viewers of the Clash Round North America. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Planned this. Okay. So wait, here's the thing. Now, if you are Ender, and you, are, you obviously you found it seems like a weakness in Marcel's deck that he's playing right now that he has to play until he wins with, do you, <laughs> do you mind game him and switch up your deck right now? He could, but he's going to feel really silly if he well, ends because, up losing. But eventually, you have, he's has to win that other one yes. anyway, right? He has to face his, his fear. Right. right, eventually he's going to have to face it. So do you do it now and try to catch Marcel P off guard because he's expecting... I think there's an advantage to that, but I think this matchup is the one that Ender's really going to push and get the maximum number of wins that he can with it because here's the thing. There's a huge difference in this game. It's only one elixir, though. Marcel has arrows for the enemy skeleton army. Okay. Ender has log. 
Now, how many times did we see log versus skeleton army versus arrows to skeleton army? Mm -hmm. Three times, four times, five times, six times throughout the game? That is slowly but surely building up Ender a big elixir advantage over the course of the game. And we saw it. Oh. Ender was up at one point by as much as four or five elixir. And a lot of those matchups where everything was just crashing into each other was going in his favor because Marcel had to spend three elixir and wait a little bit for the arrows to deliver. Is the log is just log. boom. Instant log, cheaper, faster. Mm. That could be the deciding factor in this next game. One of the other things too is in Marcel P's other deck, he had the log as well. And Marcel P's log usage was excellent. That's one of the things that we identified about the log plus the ice column in terms of defending against an expo. Marcel P was ex using the log excellently, getting a lot of value, not just taking down skeleton armies, but taking down two, three other cards at a time. And I think that really is hurting Marcel P that he doesn't have that option now. Hmm. Now, ice column, when ice column dies and he does the death damage, it slows down air and ground units. Correct. But it doesn't apply that freeze, right? It just it slows. Does. Yes. It is a slow. It's not a freeze. It's actually so it the exact same slow the as an ice wizard. It's a 35% slow that lasts for two seconds. So okay. Very strong, very strong effect for only a two elixir card. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our next match of the finals is about to begin. Marcel P still just needs one more victory. But Ender starting to claw his way back. Will Ender do it? Or will Marcel P end it right here and right now? Let's check it out. Two to one. The pressure is on. Ooh. Who will be the first victor of the Clash Round North American Ooh. Open? I, oh, man. It's, I'm, I'm so nervous. I can only imagine what these competitors <laughs> How are feeling right My now. My heart is beating so fast. All right, here comes the skeleton. We were talking about this. Log in this situation would have reduced the effectiveness of that skeleton army by just a bit, but I think this time Marcel P was pretty quick on the draw. Now look, even though he came out ahead and he was able to stop it, he's now down by about mm, two elixir or so. Mm -hmm. Maybe this mega minion gets killed, it all works out in the end, but Ender, I think, is able to spend less elixir to get his effective setups going. Point goes the helmet, Ooh. and the mega minion did not get a single swing. I but Marcel, Marcel, oh, go ahead. Marcel P, we saw consistently in the last game, get out of tempo, right? It was just all about Ender attacking over and over and over again. And we talked about the cycle of the crossover. Now, this is a big Ooh. connection for Marcel P. Has Marcel P solved Ender's game? He was able to <laughs> really, he was able to really get that sort of Oh no, the dropping the skeleton army on top of the other skeleton army was not actually a great play because there's a one second deploy time. Whenever a new unit is cast, it takes about one second before they start attacking. And in that second, we saw all of Ender skeletons Just whoop, take them out. Mm -hmm. Actually, key thing that happened there, skeletons do the exact same amount of damage as they have hit points. There was one situation where Ender's level three skeleton army actually hurt him. They didn't kill oh. Marcel skeletons in one swing like they should have. That's oh, no. actually very interesting, and that's why Marcel P skeletons, we saw them actually move across the bridge because they right. won so heavily. But situation still remains, and I think the big problem for Marcel P is really the cycle. Right. Ender's deck is much faster. It feels like it is, at least. And especially now, it's even, but you will start to notice, the instant we hit the minute mark and we go into double elixir, I guarantee that Ender's gonna run away with the, with the pace of the game. I think you're right. So it's really gonna be up to Marcel P to figure out a way to finish the game before they get too deep into overtime. This possibly is Marcel P's last good crocodile attack. He has to spend arrows to take down the skeleton army, but how do you stop the ice golem? And it looks like Inferno Tower will do just that. And I think it's all about Ender now. He's gonna play the crossbow. Has a little bit of Inferno Tower left, but I don't think it's gonna defend him that well. Ice Spirit comes around the bend, and I think it's gonna get taken down and Tesla good defense. Tesla out of hand there. He used the Tesla to help set up his Expo, and then he really needed it in terms of attacking the other Expo. Oh, fire the arrows! No, he's gonna use Skeleton Army to defend. Now you're gonna need to use arrows anyway. There it finally is, but the Mega Minion is still alive. A little bit of damage, but now the counterattack. And I don't know if Marcel P has what he has in hand to defend. Sorry. No, not at all. I was going to say the Ice Spirit that Marcel P played, it actually got attacked by the Mega Minion, but if he had jumped and locked onto that Mega Minion, I think that would have been game. So very good play on Marcel's, or on Ender's uh, Mega Minion to clear Oh that thing no! Out. And we're starting to see the effects of getting Elixir advantage slowly and having a faster cycling deck, but has Marcel P done enough damage to cycle out this, this tower? We'll have to see. He can consistently fireball to hurt that crossbow. And I wonder almost if it's better for Marcel P to start considering playing his Tesla Tower a little bit early because that consistently every single time the double drop right. of Expo and Ice Golem is stopping that crossbow from taking a lot of damage. Oh, and this crossbow is doing so much. I think that's enough wow. to take that tower down. This fireball. We are deep in overtime and it's not going to be enough. There it is! There it is! Ender tying Ooh. it up two to two against Marcel P.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are going into a fifth and final game here for the finals of the Clash Royale North American Opens. So, in that case, Ender played the same deck. There was two cards that we mentioned the log after the last game where Marcel had to pay three arrows for right. three elixir for arrows time. versus two for log. Another interaction in that was that Ender has two elixir ice golem, Marcel had three elixir knight. Night. So even mm. if they were trying to do the exact same thing, Marcel P spending two more elixir, one more for the, the tank and one more for the removal spell, wow. and that allowed Ender just to consistently get ahead. And I am i cannot say enough about Ender's play. It's been very, very consistent and being able to outsmart one of the best Expo players in the world. Woo. How do you overcome that when someone is ahead of you with Elixir? Like, what, what can you possibly do? You to... really need to play the mind game, right? You need to change up the line of play because if you go toe to toe, you're gonna lose every single time. That or Marcel P needed to make sure that he made big plays at the start of the match, right? We saw, actually, Marcel P was coming out on those decisions before the double elixir time hit. Yeah. And that's really because his deck is just a little bit more expensive, but before you have that elixir regeneration, you will still win out those trades if you're playing them appropriately. Problem is for Marcel P is he needs to play one step beyond appropriately, right? He needs to play excellently. And it's just hard to do that against a player like Ender. This shows how challenging the double deck format really is, because if you want to play two copies of the same deck, you have to make some really tough choices. Huh. You can bring two totally different decks. There's no requirement that you overlap any cards. You just right. can't overlap more than four. Right. So if you were to bring something like a Hog Rider deck and an Expo deck, that's easy, right? You just build two separate decks. But if you want to build two Expo decks, you really have to make those hard substitutions. Hmm. And we saw those substitutions in Marcel P's alternate deck really come back to bite him against Ender's primary deck. But in the deciding game five, both are playing their alternate decks. Yeah, yeah. Oh we'll see, gosh. we'll see. Marcel P still has Skeleton Army, but Ender will not have Log anymore, unless he chose to bring Log in both decks, which I'm not actually sure about. Yeah, That's everything it. is still going as planned. <laughs> yeah, okay. Randy, your master, your master plan is still underneath, where, Ma where uh, Marcel is just going to lose, lose twice and then come back right now, because... Ender, there's no way. He Anything could happen. Of right course now. he could date. This Winner of this game walks home with two thousand oh, dollars yeah. and an oh, invite God. to Clash Royale. No pressure. Yeah. Guys. I don't. I can't imagine the nerves they're feeling when there's that much money on the center of the table. You might play better. You might play worse. Well, we'll find out right now, ladies and gentlemen. The final match of tonight's Clash Royale North American Opens between Marcel P and Ender. Who do you think it's gonna be? I think it's gonna be Marcel P. <laughs> Really? Now this time, Ender doesn't have the rocket, right? That he had used in past versions. He's already yeah. won with that deck twice. Or is this the rocket deck? No, I think I, I think this is the rocket deck. I think deck. this is the rocket deck. So he may have switched after he losing in round one. Right he wants to take the rocket deck into the final oh. match. My game. Yes, you are right. This is the rocket deck. He's got Tesla. Now both are running Tesla. They don't get the advantage of that very excellent Inferno Tower. Mm -hmm. All right. Just, just Tesla, huh. just shaking hands. Tesla hey, they trade. Hey. Oh, oh, Ender's won. The projectile <laughs> speed is too quick. <laughs> the nice, the most important thing is that neither player have the expo right now, or they don't have the Tesla tower to fight the opponent, the opposing uh, expo. Oh, oh, how do you do that? How do you miss? Come on. How do you miss? Those are guard? fast guards. Yeah, they're they're running real fast. It was perfect though because he didn't take any damage. Yeah. So that was a perfect uh, arrows. Uh, wizard arrives precisely <laughs> when he needs to. <laughs> right. That is always. We all make mistakes, you know. All right. Ooh, Ice Spirit to tank that up. It's Skeleton Army to protect the Ice Spirit, and we'll actually freeze uh -oh. up the crossbow. Uh -oh. Here's but there's a log. log, so he did use to choose to keep log as the duplicate cards in both decks. Marcel P opted to switch log out for arrows, and that kind of came back to bite him in these last two games. Ender, I think, correctly identified that he really needs log and expo in both versions. That one hit on the Mega Minion is pretty significant. Actually caught Ender up in terms of tower health, and Marcel P is still feeling like he's behind. Yeah, he is. He's behind, but only about 300 health, but that's what? One fireball, one rocket? Sure. Very significant. Here comes Crossbow, placed on Marcel P's side of the field. Mega Minion coming across, wow. taking it down, oh, takes down the Ice no. Spirit. Now the guards, but just a little bit too late. Is there anything to play in front of the Crossbow? No. And that's going to mitigate a little bit of the Crossbow's damage. Just like that. Ooh. And Ender, Ender's tower went down, took about 600 health from that exchange. If Marcel P can do that two more times, that is within fireball range. He's a good ship. Great play with the knight there up early. I think he knew that an expo was about to come down. Oh, Ooh, the fire perfect. spirit! Wow. And the log right after. And the ice spirit ran into the log, and now Marcel P is going to have to play the fireball to lower down the health of the crossbow. But good line of play from Ender is going to earn him a lot of damage onto his tower. Absolutely. Great distraction there. Even though Marcel P's Mega Minion ended up winning that exchange and taking down the Expo at what cost? Yes, big arrows for the Knight is not going to do too much damage. 
is coming down to the wire now. And uh, we're getting into the crossbow hole of just cards being played over and over and over again. And it seems like Ender has continually secured momentum advantage here. The crossbow is doing a lot. Down to 300 wow. health. And I think this might be wow. it. Oh, it's just oh, oh, it. Oh. oh my god. Ender oh, wins. Oh, oh, he can't do it. To take the finals from Marcel P. Marcel what P went up 2 the wall. I said don't call it a comeback. Yo, let's, let's call it a comeback. Call it a comeback. comeback. If Ender just came wow. back, he takes the first place. And he is now our first winner of the Clash Round North American Opens. And his name is going down in Clash history. What a ridiculous back and forth battle there. It, that, that one just kind of fired to the end. Marcel P, up ahead. Ender, up ahead. Marcel P, up ahead. Ender, up ahead. And then what was that switch? What was the final point? What are you going to ask me? It was with the level three expo. <laughs> we can't even get over that. With under, level three skeleton army, level three expo. Yeah. And there is no doubt show you. that that was some of the best decision making we could possibly see yes. in a high level clash royale tournament to pull yes. out these games against some of the other best players in the world with under tournament cap yeah. cards. That's amazing. Who would have thought the first clash royale North American Open would have ended like that? That is making a statement. Andrew is like, listen, like <laughs> if you if you have cards that are a little above me, I, I don't care. I'm gonna outsmart you. I'm gonna outplay you. I'm gonna outposition you. And it was a fantastic back and forth. Marcel looking so strong though. I mean, getting Andrew into those kind of those, those patterns that were not yeah. good for him up until he got to his Tesla deck and he just couldn't do it. We have now our replays of the finals. So let's go ahead and get right into them. I mean, there were so many matches in this best of five and so many interactions, but consistently, as we see here, Ender will secure just momentum advantage. This is what we were talking about, about Log being more effective than Arrows, and we saw them face-to-face -face on this board right now. Arrows came in from Marcel P, Log came in from Ender, but in the end, Ender is the one with the crossbow tagging onto the tower, and that happens continuously over the course of this match. The lack of breathing room, I think, is really key for how Ender ended up winning this whole match is be, he was able to like see what you were doing and then immediately play another expo and he knows exactly what you don't have in hand because you just played dry skull or you sure. just played your knight so i know you don't have your knight so i can play the counter to whatever is not knight it allowed ender to sort of minimize what he could possibly expect to see from his opponent and prepare for that correctly i think that ender has such a good kind of slim deck playing crossbow He's able to, every single time after the push clears out, play another crossbow and have that crossbow that did the tail end damage. And so mm. just in the fact that he was continuously able to keep that situation where it was, talk about submission hold, right? There's no getting out of it. Yeah. One thing I wanted to say there too is Marcel P at the end, his fireballs were being used when they were, when they were going on the side of Ender. He was also trying to make sure he hit the tower. So he's yeah. trying to get that little bit of chip damage. By him not hitting the units instead of, you know, trying to like favor the tower instead of hitting the units at hand, is that something that may have swayed it in Ender's favor? I don't think so, because I think by the time Marcel P was casting those fireballs, the individual setup was already lost. So he's sort of mm -hmm. going like, we play our units up front, we play the towers, I lose, the expo has about half health left on it, I'm just going to fireball to try to get it off the table, okay. so that way I quit taking damage on my tower, and it's only going to be worth it if you can hit the tower as well, because of course you want to Ugh, stay wow. kept up in the damage race. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a look at our brackets so you guys can walk us through the night. Yeah, the story of the night here. So crazy. So many players fell, right? There could only be one eventual winner, and Ender actually, out of all of them, with the low-level epics coming from so the bottom awesome. end of the bracket, representing Reddit Charlie, wins it all. And I think that he did that fantastically. Killer Whale was one of the players that we identified as the crossbow killer, yeah. right? His deck was actually so well positioned to defeat crossbow, Ender made it work. And then Marcel P is kind of alongside Woody as one of the top players in the world at playing Siege. Right. And Ender outpaces him, not only <laughs> in Siege, in a mirror match with lower level cards. Yeah. I mean, Ender beat three different players from three different major guilds on his way to the championship. He took Checks. out Pato, <laughs> a, Pato HS of Synergy Mexico, takes out Killer Whale of Takeover, and then takes out Marcel P, co-leader of Reddit Alpha. Each of those clans you can find on the top global leaderboard, yeah. and he took, and Reddit Charlie, by the way, is it, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just not that high ranking clan. And he said, you know what? I'm not afraid of your trophies. I'm not afraid of your higher level cards. I'm gonna outplay you. Yeah and rides a level three expo all, all the, the way, way to victory to uh, not a bad payday. No, not, not at, all. at all. So let's let's take a little look at what he's making tonight. Yeah. So not only is Ender getting $2,000 for Ooh. his win that he just, but he, he's going to the crown duels. And 
because of that, he's going to be remembered throughout Clash history. That's right. That and was insane. One of the 16 King of Kings that we're going to see right. in the Crown Duel finale. We have 15 more Coronation broadcasts, but the first one, of course, goes to Ender. Who do you think is going to... Uh, Maybe speed we found in the next 15 or so. I don't know. Maybe it could be somebody at home watching right now. Oh. Just go to Clash Royale Open. I see that. And, <laughs> dot com and you can <laughs> you have see? a chance, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, go over to that website where you guys could be the next ender. You could also be here. We could be praising your name. And also, we could be crowning you our champion of the night. So before we get to that, though, just remind you guys, the next broadcast is happening tomorrow, Monday, same time, same place, 6 p.m. Show up here for the next ridiculous duels and who knows maybe Woody will be back maybe Ender will be back what, what, this, what if, what if we have a double possibilities victory possibilities are endless po right yeah, now absolutely that was crazy absolutely endless possibilities but now ladies and gentlemen the moment that we have all been waiting for the crowning of our champion it is Ender Ender the man who now when I see a minion who's a higher level than I will no longer fret the man who Goblin Huts will not come out of his tower to even try to comprehend Ender, the guy who turns the master into the student and becomes the master himself. Ellie, will you do the honors? I will. Ender, this one's for you. Ender! Yeah! Congratulations, you are a fantastic Clash Royale. -er. On behalf of everyone here at the official Supercell Clash Royale North American Opens, that was Rainy and Rumham. I'm Ella. I'm Christian. Have a most ridiculous night. See ya! Ender!